Hey there folks, Peter here with BlackRock Business and today we're continuing our little series on configuration settings and preferences in QuickBooks point of sale. We're going to talk specifically today about sales preferences, which is kind of a large area in the preferences, but we're going to try and get through it quick. Before we do that, don't forget to click on the link below to jump on over to Facebook and join our special QuickBooks point of sale Facebook group where you can ask questions about features or errors and people like me and other point of sale users will answer your questions. If you're on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe so that you can get all of the latest videos that are coming out all the time on this channel. Let's get into it. All right, we're gonna go on the file menu to preferences and company. <clears throat> on the left hand side, we are going to click on sales. Okay, real quickly, general options on receipts and customer orders. How do you want your customer name to be displayed? The, by default, it's first and last, and if you have a title, it's in there too. You can do first, last, last, first, last, comma, first, last, and then the Mr. First, and then last title. What is that? Oh, with the comma. Okay, you get it. So next, when printing group item on receipt order, this is interesting. This is kind of how, uh, how your group items are going to show up on your receipt. If you didn't know, a group item is a bunch of individual items with their own price because they're a group. So um, by default, it's print item prices only. Personally, I think maybe you want to print the group price only. Or you can do both, but you can fiddle around with this and print out your test receipts and see how it looks. Uh, I like the idea of showing maybe just the group price, but I, I think printing the item prices only kind of gives the customer an idea of how much they're saving, maybe. Um, so yeah, that might be good. All right, now next, uh, oh, I had this checked from yesterday. Require a promotional code on receipts and customer orders uh, that is like you can put a promo code on receipts and stuff but if if every single sale in your situation is gonna come from a place or a promo or something that you want to track then you can actually require it and uh, just a quick note I'm gonna have a video on a quick easy way to do zip code tracking using this feature without having to enter a customer name in so you can use this that way as well, even though it doesn't fill in the zip code anywhere. It's just you can get a report of zip codes by kind of doing a workaround here. All right. Now, next, require a manual media account for X out, X and Z out. Uh, there is that little calculator for counting all your dimes and nickels and everything on your end of day. This just merely requires that it gets done that way. So maybe your employees are like not very good at counting their drawer. Make them. Make them count the drawer using this setting. Next, allow selling miscellaneous items from receipts. Um, if you didn't know, at the if you hit the down arrow in the place where you scan in products, at the bottom of the down arrow screen is miscellaneous item and you that's like you can use that for selling something that's not on your inventory list or you can't find it and you rip you just you need to sell it to this customer however employees can abuse that and just start you know selling things and I don't know pocketing half the money using the miscellaneous item uh, so you can allow it or you cannot allow it Next, allow return of more items than sold on the receipt. Um, usually that's fine. Uh, you can turn that off if you're having a problem with some sort of scam going on with your employees where they're not doing returns correctly or they're doing returns for the wrong items. This would only allow uh, returns from the receipt. Uh, if you didn't know, you can add extra stuff to a return and put that on negative as well. And then uh, that would be populated back into your inventory. But maybe that's screwing you up. Maybe employees are doing it wrong, so you can turn this off. Next, when do you want your cash drawer to open? Uh, cash and check is pretty normal. Some people also want to put a double copy of credit card slips in there or the signed copy of credit card slip. 
so you could do it for credit card and um, I don't know why you well yeah gift certificate some people turn these on or off according to whether their drawer has like a little slit in the front of it because they can slide things in I mean you can slide a check in the front different stuff like that so this is how you make the drawer either open or not when a receipt is paid with one of these methods next in the sales area here preferences we're going to discounts now first up at the top here when you're manual manually entering a discount for each line item or certain line items you can require a discount code reason or discount reason it's a little drop down on the discount that that tells uh, the point of sale why this discount is being given otherwise you can do discounts for no reason at all employees can scam you there um, so if you require it then you want to set out different actual good reasons why somebody would do a discount and then you can actually later do reporting on discounts and see what what your employees are giving away discounts for and why next area here print coupons on receipts I'm gonna do a whole video explaining this exactly but generally you would set up a coupon beforehand uh, whatever that might be 10% off $5 off whatever and uh, you probably don't want to include these coupons on every receipt unless it's like a very small coupon that you can live with everybody coming back um, that might be good I guess otherwise you can randomly do it every so often like every 12th receipt gets a coupon or you can have a coupon when somebody uh, does like a large sale like let's say if it's over hundred dollars they get the receipt hooray so yeah next we're going on to the receipt message area this is already probably previously filled in by your setup interview uh, but you can also change the receipt message here. It's another place you can do it. Shipping. Uh, we will be doing a video or two or many on the QuickBooks Shipping Manager where you can actually hook this up to UPS and you can ship uh, your products out to people right in point of sale and you can do uh, the different types of labels. Uh, otherwise, if you are not using the shipping manager and this is not turned on, you can still <clears throat> have a listing of shipping providers. So let's say you are shipping stuff out, but you're doing it in PayPal or you're doing it in the UPS website or you're doing it in the FedEx website. Uh, you can still have the methods in point of sale so that on a receipt, you can record the method and the tracking number and that'll be attached right to the receipt it's pretty useful if somebody calls and they're like hey I didn't get my products um, what what's the deal I didn't get my shipment so you can look up their receipt and point of sale and find the tracking number and look at exactly what's going there and and track it down last but not least in the sales preferences we have receipt tendering which is very important and for here you can turn on or off the different payment methods so let's say you you don't even do anything with gift certificates or gift cards and you never want to take a debit card well there now now you're just left with these four options and those are the buttons that will show up on the receipt screen uh, card types you can actually decide to take or not take different card types very obvious uh, tips <laughs> is very interesting uh, I don't think the tip system works very well in QuickBooks point of sale but you have the ability to add a tip uh, with a button on the side of the receipt last Lee but not least uh, block additional account charges when account charges are past due 30 days 60 days 90 days so you can choose to block or not block people from buying stuff from you in the future if they owe you money for too long make sense my name's Peter with BlackRock Business. Thanks for coming along on the sales preferences. I hope you have yourself a great day now. Leave any comments down below and we'll try and answer them as quickly as possible. Bye-bye.